Surah 24, Al-Nur, the light. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. This is a surah which we have revealed and which we have made obligatory. We have revealed it in clear instructions so that you may take heed. Those who fornicate, whether female or male, flog each one of them with a hundred lashes and let not tenderness for them deter you from what pertains to Allah's religion, if you do truly believe in Allah and the last day. And let a party of believers witness their punishment. Let the fornicator not marry any except a fornicatress or idolatress, and let the fornicatress not marry any except a fornicator or an idolater. That is forbidden to the believers. Those who accuse honorable women of unchastity, but do not produce four witnesses, flog them with eighty lashes, and do not admit their testimony ever after. They are indeed transgressors. Accept those of them that repent thereafter and mend their behavior. For surely, Allah is most forgiving, ever compassionate. As for those who accuse their wives of unchastity and have no witnesses except themselves, the testimony of such a one is that he testifies, swearing by Allah four times that he is truthful in his accusation. And a fifth time, that the curse of Allah be on him if he be lying in his accusation. And the punishment shall be averted from the woman if she were to testify, swearing by Allah four times that the man was lying. And a fifth time, that the wrath of Allah be on her if the man be truthful in his accusation. Were it not for Allah's bounty and His mercy unto you, and that Allah is much prone to accept repentance and is wise you would have landed yourselves into great difficulty on the question of unsubstantiated accusation of your spouses. Surely, those who invented this calumny are a band from among you. Do not deem this incident an evil for you. Nay, it is good for you. Every one of them has accumulated sin in proportion to his share in this guilt, and he who has the greater part of it shall suffer a mighty chastisement. When you heard of it, why did the believing men and women not think well of their own folk and say, this is a manifest calumny. Why did they not bring four witnesses in support of their accusation? Now that they have brought no witnesses, it is indeed they who are liars in the sight of Allah. Were it not for Allah's bounty and His mercy unto you in the world and in the hereafter, a grievous chastisement would have seized you on account of what you indulged in. Just think how wrong you were when one tongue received it from another and you uttered with your mouth something you knew nothing about. You deemed it to be a trifle, while in the sight of Allah it was a serious matter. And why, no sooner than you had heard it, did you not say, It becomes us not even to utter such a thing. Holy are you, O Allah. This is a mighty calumny. Allah admonishes you, If you are true believers, never repeat the like of what you did. Allah clearly expounds to you His instructions. Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Verily, those who love that indecency should spread among the believers deserve a painful chastisement in the world and the hereafter. Allah knows, but you do not know. Were it not for Allah's bounty and His mercy unto you, and that Allah is most forgiving and wise, the evil that had been spread among you would have led to terrible consequences. Believers, do not follow in Satan's footsteps. Let him who follows in Satan's footsteps remember that Satan bids people to indecency and evil. Were it not for Allah's bounty and His mercy unto you, not one of you would have ever attained purity. But Allah enables whomsoever He wills to attain purity. Allah is all-hearing, all-knowing. Let those among you who are bounteous and resourceful not swear to withhold giving to the kindred, to the needy, and to those who have forsaken their homes in the cause of Allah. Rather, let them forgive and forbear. Do you not wish that Allah should forgive you? Allah is ever forgiving most merciful. Those that accuse chaste, unwary, believing women have been cursed in the world and the hereafter, and a mighty chastisement awaits them. Let them not be heedless of the day when their own tongues, their hands, and their feet shall all bear witness against them as to what they have been doing. On that day, Allah will justly requite them, and they will come to know that Allah and He alone is the truth, the one who makes the truth manifest. Corrupt women are for corrupt men, and corrupt men for corrupt women. Good women are for good men, and good men for good women. They are innocent of the calumnies people utter. There shall be forgiveness for them and a generous provision. Believers, 
enter not houses other than your own houses until you have obtained the permission of the inmates of those houses and have greeted them with peace. This is better for you. It is expected that you will observe this. Then, if you find no one in them, do not enter until you have been given permission to enter. And if you are told to go back, then do go back. This is a purer way for you. Allah knows all what you do. However, it is not blameworthy for you if you enter houses that are uninhabited, but wherein there is something of use to you. Allah is well aware of what you disclose and what you conceal. O Prophet, enjoin believing men to cast down their looks and guard their private parts. That is purer for them. Surely, Allah is well aware of all what they do. And enjoin believing women to cast down their looks and guard their private parts, and not reveal their adornment except that which is revealed of itself, and to draw their veils over their bosoms, and not to reveal their adornment, save to their husbands or their fathers, or the fathers of their husbands, or of their own sons, or the sons of their husbands, or their brothers, or the sons of their brothers, or the sons of their sisters, or the women with whom they associate, or those that are in bondage, or the male attendants in their service free of sexual interest, or boys that are yet unaware of illicit matters pertaining to women. Nor should they stamp their feet on the ground in such manner that their hidden ornament becomes revealed. Believers, turn together, all of you, to Allah in repentance that you may attain true success. Marry those of you that are single, whether men or women, and those of your male and female slaves that are righteous. If they are poor, Allah will enrich them out of His bounty. Allah is immensely resourceful, all-knowing. Let those who cannot afford to marry keep themselves chaste until Allah enriches them out of His bounty. And write out a deed of manumission for such of your slaves that desire their freedom in lieu of payment. If you see any good in them and give them out of the wealth that Allah has given you, and do not compel your slave girls to prostitution, for the sake of the benefits of worldly life, the while they desire to remain chaste. And if anyone compels them to prostitution, Allah will be most pardoning, much merciful to them after their subjection to such compulsion. Verily, we have sent down for you revelations which clearly expound true guidance and examples of those who passed away before you and an admonition for those who fear Allah. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth, his light in the universe may be likened to a niche wherein is a lamp, and the lamp is in the crystal which shines in star-like brilliance. It is lit from the oil of a blessed olive tree that is neither eastern nor western. Its oil well nigh glows forth of itself, though no fire touched it. Light upon light, Allah guides to His light whom He wills. Allah sets forth parables to make people understand. Allah knows everything. Those who are directed to this light are found in houses which Allah has allowed to be raised and wherein His name is to be remembered. In them people glorify Him in the morning and in the evening. People whom neither commerce nor striving after profit diverts them from remembering Allah, from establishing prayer and from paying zakah. People who dread the day on which all hearts will be overturned and eyes will be petrified. People who do all this so that Allah may reward them in accordance with the best that they did. Indeed, He will bestow upon them more out of His bounty, for Allah grants whomsoever He wills beyond all measure. But for those who deny the truth, their deeds are like a mirage in the desert, which the thirsty supposes to be water until he comes to it only to find that it was nothing. He found instead that Allah was with him and he paid his account in full. Allah is swift in settling the account. Or its similitude is that of depths of darkness upon an abysmal sea covered by a billow, above which is a billow, above which is a cloud, creating darkness piled one upon another. When he puts forth his hand, he would scarcely see it. He to whom Allah assigns no light, he will have no light. Do you not see that all that is in the heavens and the earth, even the birds that go about spreading their wings in flight, extol his glory? Each knows the way of its prayer and of its extolling Allah's glory. Allah is well aware of whatever they do. Allah's is the dominion of the heavens and the earth, and to Him are all destined to return. Do you not see that it is Allah who gently drives the clouds? 
then he joins them together and then turns them into a thick mass, and thereafter you see raindrops fall down from its midst, and then he sends down hail from the heaven, thanks to the mountains, and causes it to smite whom he wills, and averts it from whom he wills. The flash of his lightning almost takes away the sight. It is Allah who alternates the night and the day. Surely there is a lesson in it for those who have sight. Allah has created every animal from water. Of them, some move on their bellies, some move on two legs, and some on four. Allah creates whatever He wills. Surely, Allah has power over everything. Verily, we have sent down revelations that clearly explain the truth. Allah guides whomsoever He wills to a straight way. They say, we believe in Allah and the Messenger, and we obey. But thereafter, a faction of them turns away from obedience. These indeed are not believers. When they are called to Allah and His Messenger, that He, that is the Messenger, may judge the disputes among them, a faction of them turns away. However, if the right is on their side, they come to Him, professing their submissiveness. Do their hearts suffer from the disease of hypocrisy? Or have they fallen prey to doubts? Or do they fear that Allah and His Messenger will wrong them? Nay, the truth is that they themselves are wrongdoers. When those that believe are called to Allah and His Messenger in order that He, that is the Messenger, may judge their disputes among them, nothing becomes them but to say, We hear and we obey. Such shall attain true success. Those who obey Allah and His Messenger and fear Him and avoid disobeying Him, such indeed shall triumph. The hypocrites solemnly swear by Allah, If you order us, we shall surely go forth and fight in the cause of Allah. Tell them, do not swear. The state of your obedience is known. Allah is well aware of all that you do. Say, Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. But if you turn away, then know well that the Messenger is responsible for what he has been charged with, and you are responsible for what you have been charged with. But if you obey him, you will be guided to the right way. The Messenger has no other responsibility but to clearly convey the command. Allah has promised those of you who believe and do righteous deeds that He will surely bestow power on them in the land, even as He bestowed power on those that preceded them, and that He will firmly establish their religion, which He has been pleased to choose for them, and He will replace with security the state of fear that they are in. Let them serve Me and associate none with Me in My divinity. Whoso thereafter engages in unbelief, such indeed are the ungodly. Establish prayer and pay zakah and obey the messenger so that mercy may be shown to you. Do not even imagine that those who disbelieve can render Allah powerless in the land. Their abode is the fire. What an evil abode! Believers, at three times let those whom your right hands possess and those of your children who have not yet reached puberty ask leave of you before entering your quarters, before the morning prayer, and when you take off your clothes at noon, and after the night prayer, these are the three times of privacy for you. If they come to you at other times, then there is no sin for them nor for you, for you have to visit one another frequently. Thus does Allah clearly explain His directives to you. Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. And when your children attain puberty, let them ask leave to come to you like their elders used to ask leave. Thus does Allah clearly explain to you His signs. He is all-knowing. All wise. The women who are past their youth and can no longer bear children and do not look forward to marriage will incur no sin if they cast off their outer garments without displaying their adornment. But if they remain modest, that is still better for them. Allah is all hearing, all knowing. There is no blame on the blind, nor any blame on the lame, nor any blame on the sick, nor on yourselves that you eat in your own houses, or your father's houses, or your mother's houses or your brothers' houses, or the houses of your sisters, or the houses of your fathers, brothers, or the houses of your father's sisters, or in the houses of your mother's brothers, or in the houses of your mother's sisters, or in the houses whose keys you possess, or the house of a friend. There is no blame if you eat together or separately. But when you enter such houses, greet each other with a salutation appointed by Allah, a salutation that is blessed and good. Thus does Allah expound His signs to you in order that you will act with understanding. The true believers are only those who sincerely believe in Allah and in His Messenger, and who, whenever they are with Him on some common errand, 
they do not go away until they have asked leave of him. Verily, those who ask leave of you, it is they who truly believe in Allah and his messenger. So if they ask your leave in connection with some of their affairs, give leave to those whom you will, and ask Allah for forgiveness on their behalf. Surely, Allah is much forgiving, ever merciful. Muslims, do not make the calling of the messenger among you as your calling one another. Allah knows well those of you who surreptitiously steal away, taking shelter behind one another. Let those who go against the order of the messenger beware lest a trial of severe punishment afflict them. Lo, whatsoever is in the heavens and the earth belongs to Allah. He is well aware of your ways, and the day when they will be returned to him, he will tell them all what they did. Allah knows everything.